This video is about the U.S. housing market, the latest uh, housing construction and new home sales data for March, and lumber prices for April 2023. Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here at the end of April to give you another update about the latest data for the housing starts in the U.S. and the new home sales in the U.S. with my lumber prices to give you an idea of what's happening in construction and with the sawmills across North America. And so the government data for the housing comes out once a month and it's for the previous month. So there's a six week lag there between what is going on and when we see the data. And my lumber prices, they come out every week for that week. And so Madison's Lumber Reporter has been publishing uh, every Friday since 1952. I'm the third owner. I took over in 2008 when my boss retired. Um, and the lumber prices respond very quickly to market conditions, whether the housing activity construction is going up or going down. And so I plot a graph with those two data sets against each other, my lumber prices being a little bit more forward since they are for the time right now and the housing is for, like I said, the previous month. So let's look at some of the graphs because the doom and gloom commentary that people were having um, last year and even at the beginning of this year has not quite materialized. Yes, indeed, housing has slowed down but it was at such a high at a peak where a lot of people due to, you know, a sudden change to society, people were flocking quickly to either buy a new home, a different home, or uh, very, uh, do a lot of remodeling and reconstruction of their existing home. So that rush of activity has played out and other macroeconomic conditions have come on, uh, inflation, all these things, which prompted the increase of interest rates, which put a very quick slowdown in that big momentum of home sales, which impacts new housing construction, which impacts lumber prices. And so that downturn uh, or rec uh, correction down was not as severe as people some people were saying it would be, and we're getting a little bit of an uptick now, which is normal for the time of year, as spring is generally the beginning of construction season across the continent. And we've had a very delayed spring this year, the harsh, harsh winter weather, deep cold, continuing dumps of snow across uh, Canada and the US in different parts of the continent have been going on even until last week. Saskatchewan had a big dump of snow. Of course, it, it didn't last, but still. Now we are uh, coming up onto May. The days are longer. The builders have more confidence in you know the weather conditions, daylight hours, being able to work. And more specifically for new housing construction, uh, there is a, a big detriment to pouring concrete if the temperature might drop to below freezing. So I think that there's going to be, um, there was probably a little bit of a uh, pent up demand uh, of activity for construction, but not the levels that we saw the past couple of years. Where is it gonna be? We don't know. We will find out as the next data sets are released for you know April, May, June. But one thing that you can know is if you watch my lumber prices every week during that time, you'll get an indication of whether it's up or down. So let's look at a graph and I'll explain a few things and um, tell you what the statistics are for right now. Okay, and so this is the latest data for uh, US housing starts. The purple line at the top is total units and the blue line below it is uh, single family one unit housing starts. And the three colored lines are the lumber prices Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce, and Southern Pine two by fours. You can see there's a correlation in the up and down. Obviously the lumber prices rose up much higher than the housing, but the trend line uh, follows, especially that low in the early beginning of 2020 when uh, the shock to society of the lockdowns and the COVID pandemic.
So if you look to the right of the graph at the current time, April of 2023, you can see how the lumber prices are ahead of the housing data. And that's what I mean by lumber being a leading indicator, letting you know each week what the expectation can be for the housing data that will come out in the following month or six weeks. So total housing starts in the U.S. for March of 2023 were almost flat after a big surge the previous month and were uh, down 17% from March 2022. Single family, which is the largest share of the market and construction method which uses the most wood, again rose, uh, this time up by 2.7% to 861,000 units from February's 838,000 units. And then for lumber, meanwhile, at the end of April, the price of benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4, number two and better, was flat at US $360 per thousand board feet. This is down by $13 or 3% from the previous month when it was $373 and is down by $700 or 66% from the same week in 2022 when it was $1,060. As for that southern yellow pine, east side, 2 by 4 number 2 and better, which you can see on this graph, that price at the end of April 2023 was U.S. $535 per thousand board feet, which is down by $10 or 2%, from the previous week when it was 545, but is up by $12 or 2% from one month ago when it was 523. Compared to the same week in 2022, when that price was $815, at the end of April this year, this price is down by $280 or 34%. Compared to two years ago, when we had that incredible high, it was $1,120. This week's price is down by $585 or 52%. And then here is the single family starts and the single family permits, uh, definitely of most interest to the lumber manufacturing industry because that's where most of the volume of the wood goes into. And again, the light blue line at the top is the starts and the purple line is the permits. And toward the end there now in the spring of 2023, you can see how those data points are in correlation to the lumber prices as they were rising and then fell a little bit. Now coming back up, we are just uh, into the beginning of May when normally lumber sales start to uh, really get into the highest volume for the year. As I said, we've had a very, very slow beginning of spring this year, so we haven't even seen large volume buying of lumber yet. There are folks who think that means that's all we're going to have for this year, which is possible. But one thing you can know is having access to the weekly lumber price data will tell you what the housing is going to do next month. Okay, and so the word from the realtors and from, for example, the National Association of Home Builders is that the expectation for actual construction activity and new home selling during this year is not that great. Um, we think that it will be a short spurt of building home selling and then things will quiet down again into the middle of the year during the summer and um, go into a another uh, downtrend toward the end of the year but we'll see as time goes by the way things are right now it's quite muted and there doesn't seem to be any reason to propel upward there doesn't seem to be any uh, actual you know, fundamental reason in the marketplace for uh, lumber sales to increase just yet and then for the prices to go up. But it is early days yet. And so uh, let's look at some more graphs and I'll tell you um, a bit more about what's going on right now. And we'll see as time goes by how things are going further on into this year, 2023. And so here is the latest U.S. new home sales data, again, against those same lumber prices that you were just looking at. And if you look toward the right into the present time, April, March and April of 2023, you can see an uptick there correlating with where uh, the what the lumber prices were doing back in February. People might wonder, you know, how are these two data sets related? 
there is a direct correlation in that when demand for existing home goes up, it pushes demand for new home sales, which of course causes more activity in new housing construction. Something very interesting that has just come out about this data for the current time, typically the new home market is about 11% of total housing and right now it is 30%. So 30% of homes sold lately have been new homes as opposed to 11% the previous ratio. Of course, the pure data is important, and you can see on this graph, while the um, house sales are ticking up slightly compared to the latter part of 2022, they're still lower than those crazy times during the middle of 2020 and once again at the end of 2021. So sales of new homes in the U.S. increased in March to 680,000 units, up 10% from February's sharply downwardly revised 623,000 units and is only 3.4% lower than March of 2022. At the sales pace in March of 2023, it would take 7.6 months to clear the supply of homes on the market, down from a very lengthy nine months in December of 2022. And traditionally, three to six months inventory on the market is considered healthy for housing. So then here is the U.S. medium new house price from 2020 to present March of 2023, again showing those same lumber prices. There is a steady climb here uh, despite some uh, wee drops in um, the second half of last year after interest rates started to grow up. So what we have is a steady trend upward for the past few months. The median sales price of a new home in the U.S. in March rose by 2.4% to U.S. $449,800 from U.S. $438,200 in February and is up 3% from one year ago when it was $435,900. Lumber prices peaked up above that during the crazy times of early 2021 and again in the middle of 2022 and are now moderated down quite a bit. They should be rising, but they're not. And so we might have to wait until next year, spring, to see how that goes. Okay, great. And so I think the most important thing is that the inventory of unsold homes, the uh, backlog of homes for sale that have not been completed or even not yet started, all of these are shrinking. So we're coming back into a more regular dynamic of supply demand as we're used to, you know, historically over the decades, which gives us more of an ability to uh, sort of predict based on the data what's going to happen going forward. The um, importance of something like new home sales on new housing construction cannot be overstated. The new home sales are counted when the sale is booked. So it's a, a much better on time data set than existing home sales. And an increase in new home sales gives uh, incentive for builders to build new homes. So these two data sets are very related. And then of course, the uh, new housing construction directly impacts uh, what is happening with the lumber prices. So if you like what you see here, click like so that this video will get recommended to other viewers and click subscribe. So you'll be notified when we make another video because we have a big update coming up next week in May that you won't want to miss. And also, if the information is interesting to you and you need more than just a small snapshot of those six prices that I put on a lag on the website or make a YouTube, in the caption to this video is a link to my website, madisonsreport.com. You can fill out a form and we will send you the full list of the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track and what the price is for that week. And we'll also send you the commentary explaining why those prices have changed. And if you decide that that is something worthwhile for you in your business to make your decisions, ask us for an invoice and you will be able to get a login to the dashboard so that every Friday morning you'll see what the new prices are and what is happening with the market and you won't have to wait 